that unfamiliar sensation you experienced this morning? It's the feeling you get when, at long last, you wake up to some good political news from America. But the defeat of Roy Moore, who believes homosexuality should be illegal and that America was at its best in the age of slavery is a moment to lift the spirits. That a man of such vileness, also accused of being a child molester, should lose to a Democrat in deeply conservative, unbreakably Republican Alabama is more heartening still. It represents a grievous blow to Donald Trump, who endorsed Moore and campaigned for him, revealing the limits to the president's supposed electoral magnetism. Roy Stewart Moore, February 11, 1947, in Gadsden, Alabama, the oldest of five children of a construction worker and housewife. He had a large slab of Vermont granite inscribed with quotes from the Declaration of Independence, the National Anthem and the Founding Fathers installed in the Alabama Supreme Court. It was topped off with tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments. In Vietnam, Moore insisted his troops salute him on the battlefield. He was named Captain America and later recalled sleeping on sandbags to avoid a grenade tossed under his cot in retribution. I think it America was great at the time when families were united. Even though we had slavery, they cared for one another. After refusing to acknowledge same-sex marriage legislation, human rights campaign said, it is clear that Roy Moore not only believes he is above the law, he believes he is above judicial ethics. It also throws another obstacle in the path of Trump's legislative agenda, which was struggling already but which will now have one fewer vote in the Senate. More unsettling still for Trump, it suggests that accusations of past sexually predatory behavior cannot just be dismissed with the kind of blanket denial deployed by both him and Moore. Had Moore won, Trump would have held that to be proof that voters don't care about such things. He may try to argue that anyway, but it will be harder. Moore's defeat also offers a glimmer of hope for coming electoral contests the congressional elections in November 2018 and even the presidential race of 2020. For it shows that when Democratic constituencies are motivated and African Americans turned out in big numbers in Alabama, Republicans can be beaten even in their most reliable heartlands. It is now conceivable that Democrats could retake the House of Representatives next autumn, despite the structural disadvantage inflicted by gerrymandering which means Democrats have to beat Republicans in the popular vote by 7 or 8 percentage points just to secure a majority of a single seat. Retaking the Senate will be an uphill climb, but it too becomes imaginable. If the Republicans were to lose the House, then the impeachment of Donald Trump would be not just possible but probable. As you can see, it's easy to get carried away.